All right, ladies and gentlemen, and everything in between, welcome to series two, season two. It doesn't really matter either or, but season two, episode forty-one of the Manchester United career mode here today. I'm only going to be recording if you're on Twitch watching this live. I'm only going to be recording one of the episodes today. I'm quite busy this afternoon, so I've only got about an hour, and I have to go out again. So I'm going to, have to try and get this done within the hour. Um, if you're watching YouTube, obviously, there won't be a blind bit of difference. This will be uploaded on Friday as per usual, but I'm recording it on a Wednesday live. If you want to watch these episodes live and get early uh, access to them, of course, there is a link to my Twitch in the description, and you'll be able to see when I stream and what I stream and how I stream. But um, if you're watching on YouTube, of course, there'll still be daily uploads. There'll still be the double uploads on the weekends. There's plenty of content to come on the channel. So, Spurs are the opponents, and I can't lie, Liverpool are escaping from us, and I'm not a fan of it. I'm not a big fan. They just keep on winning. We've dropped some stupid points this season thus far, and it's kind of annoying because it has let uh, Liverpool get to a bit of a lead here, and they've just beat Burnley. I believe the game before they beat Southampton as well. I'm trying to find when they lost. When, they last, when did they last lose? They beat Everton, beat Leeds... Drew to Arsenal, um, beat Forest. They've had quite an easy run of things. When was the last time they actually dropped, like, actually lost? They lost to Burnley. I can't believe that. They lost to Burnley and we couldn't take advantage of that when it occurred because we lost to West Brom. We got battered by West Brom. And they beat City and we drew to Southampton. They lost to Spurs. So their most recent loss was around December time. They haven't lost since December time. Because they beat West Brom, drew to Wolves, and that's it. So the last time they lost was like mid-December. We uh, we last lost, I believe, a couple of games ago. Massive game today. Yeah, it's a big one. When was our last loss in the Premier League? Okay, we haven't lost in the league for a while either. In fact, we've done better than Liverpool. Um, we last lost against West Brom. But we've dropped stupid points to the likes of Nottingham Forest. We had that stupid 5 all against Southampton. And, of course, the one all draw against Wolves. We're just dropping points and Liverpool are keeping on going unstoppably, which sounds like a stupid object adjective to use. But this, could probably our this might actually be our last league game of the week. Because double upload tomorrow will be um, also soon at Southampton Carabao Cup final. Oh, no, we've got Palace to end the week. So Sunday's double upload will be Blackburn in the FA Cup followed by Palace. Then Monday it'll be Chelsea, Tuesday it'll be Southampton, Wednesday it'll be Man City. It's a big week ahead. We've got a long way to go in this season, but we need to make ground now, which means this is a can't-lose physical football game. So without any further ado, let's head to the press conference to see what we've got to say about this occasion. Thank you everyone for coming, thank you. Can we take your seats and we'll start getting the questions in now. Will Cavani get his chance? Right, like, I don't mind Cavani. But the game needs to take in account his rating and the fact that he is a Carabao Cup merchant. After that for each game. Realistically, Cavani ain't getting a minute here. I apologise, Ed, but you aren't you aren't facing Spurs. We need to win. And I know you could probably bring something, but I want, I want, I want more than something. I want everything. You think Tottenham Hotspur with a chance? Uh... I've got respect to them. They did beat us last time around. Complete luck how they beat us, but they did beat us. It is what it is. Football, the wonderful game, I guess. Team struggled to find consistency recently. The title bid has faltered. We're going to try and get back on track as best we can. We've got to make up ground. We haven't choked. We're just, we're just trying to find the right goalkeeper. A massive bottle of water to refresh myself with today. That's all we've got time for today. Thank you so much. I will for coming, be only everyone. recording one um, episode today. Busy afternoon.
Sorry about that. I was just fixing something. So, we are ready to go. Kukureya has completed his attacking wide back drill. I'm sure he's 84 rated now. And what do we need to work on? Defensive work rate is only medium. Apparently, he's reached his potential, which ain't great. But we'll keep working on his defensive work rate. Um, but what we need here is the best squad we can get. Take a look at the new stars before we head into this one. Manchester United keep clean sheet against Osasuna. A solid display from Manchester United's defence. So Amitai's men keep a clean sheet against CA Osasuna and claim a 3-0 victory. Um, we did actually do a match last episode. And we got a victory. Cristiano Ronaldo talking to the media following the first leg win. We should get through that with no problem. That's uh, the next game after this as well, I believe. So we'll just, we'll just focus on this one because I think the Osasuna one is wrapped up. Manchester United fans are no doubt excited at the prospect of another top-notch performance from the team. He'll be hoping to bring a run of winning form to the upcoming game. We're in great form. Observe Manchester United captain Ronaldo. And I expect us to build on that. Now, Mane's been a little prick just scoring all the time. So if we play against Liverpool, we have to try and injure him. It's going to get to the point where I just start signing the best players just so other teams can't use them. Gabriel Jesus is on the watch list as well. Um, we'll get into this game. He's got the turning speed of the Titanic. He's about 74 rated. No way should he be playing over Ronaldo, Rashford, Aussie men, etc. He won't be. Don't worry. Aussie men's got to an 87. You'll have to see it. I'm really hoping we get some more growth from McTominay because he is fantastic in that midfield. And we've got him on a good... Development plan. Fernandez 89 as well. Ronaldo back in the squad. Uh, we're going to go... We're going to go one striker. We're going to go one striker for this one. Are we? No, we're not. We're going to go two because there's a lot of strikers that come back. We're going to go two strikers. I've changed my mind. So, Ronaldo immediately on the pitch. Uh, Aussie men will start alongside him today. Rashford will be on the bench. Alanga for Alexander. I know Alexander's a bit tired, but we need the best here today. Uh, that is why Maguire will come on, despite being slightly tired as well. I think this is how we run it, run it except for, of course, captaincy. Going to Cristiano. That's not captaincy. I've done the wrong thing. Rolls. Ronaldo. And, of course, we need Darwin Nunj on the bench, which means Alanga. We have to drop here. Although we do have Rashford, actually. This is where selection headaches come in. Uh, especially as well. We've still got Bellingham to come back. He's the only one still to recover from injury. But, yeah, I think that's how we roll. Van der Beek is tired, so it's smart to go for the two-striker and go like this, I reckon. Hakimi, do we start him? He doesn't look incredibly sharp. And neither does Shaw. Do we go for a Kukureya Masrawai? I think we'll go Masrawai. I think we're going to leave Kukureya. No, you know what? I'm going to risk it. We're going to risk it. Sharpness hasn't really affected me before. Or at least if it has, I don't really pay attention to it. But that is a team we're going to roll with today. We've got to go at our very best here. We absolutely need the three points. The it in between the sticks. Shaw and Hakimi, the fullbacks. Upamecano and Maguire, the centre-backs. CDM is, of course, McTominay. Sancho left mid. Alexander right mid. Fernandez Cam. And up front, we have got Cristiano Ronaldo, the captain and the king of Old Trafford. He has made his return, and he scored in his return as well. And then Victor Ozyman will start alongside him. I was considering Nunez because he also scored in the Osasuna game. But we do need Ozyman. It's, it's, it's shown in the... What game was it before the Osasuna game? The Wednesday episode. It was Everton. We needed him to come on and help us, and boy, did he change the game. As for Spurs' team, they're going to start with Onana in between the sticks. Reguillon and Frimpong, the fullbacks. Ta Sanchez and Torres, the back three. They've got one fucker of a team, Jesus Christ. Ben Tanker and Hoybier as the centre midfielders. And as you can see, they haven't re signed Kulashevsky, so they've got Clark, right wing, Son, left wing, and then Kane up front. Probably at the back for Spurs. Might be difficult getting through that. Uh, it definitely will be. But we've got quality up front. Ronaldo's back. He'll score a goal on a dime. I'm just relying on him today. Of course, Aussie men, the top scorer for us now. He's not top scorer in the league anymore. He's not having 18 goals in 25 matches and still not being the top scorer. That's mental. That's mental to me. I would love to use Van der Beek, but he's still tired. I've just absolutely... The, the penalty is lagging for a start, but I'm also not really caring about the the war up here. Oh, ooh, tidy. 
Tidy little finish. Oh, did you look at that? Yeah, it's just insane. Bruno Fernandes. Ignore the first penalty I took. It's just perfect. Anyway, let's get into it. Let's get our game faces on. Old Trafford is the battleground. Manchester United and Tottenham are ready to fight it out. Who knows what to expect in this game, but there's a chance we'll have plenty of excitement. Stay with us for every kick of the ball, live right here on EA TV. Hello there, sad to say the weather hasn't cooperated today. It's absolutely lashing down here at Old Trafford. I'm Derek Ray, ready to bring you match commentary, and alongside me is Stuart Robson. I'm very much looking forward to bringing you action from the Premier League. It's Manchester United up against Tottenham Hotspur. Well, thanks, Derek, as always. The scene is set, two good teams, a great playing surface, and a vibrant atmosphere. It has all the ingredients for a really exciting game. Well, you never quite know who's going to dominate a game in advance, but I think you can maybe Human make an also the top five scorers first. of the league. We'll five behind Ozzy man, but he still. He's in with his fair share of goals this season, Derek. At times he's been rampant, and he will certainly need to be tightly marked. Sorry if you need a water bottle, it's quite lewd. couple of goals to add to his tally. Well, Manchester United have chosen this particular shape. Daddy De Gea stands between the posts. We'll starts with Ashraf Hakimi in the fullback positions. And so many different ways to configure an attack. In this case, it'll be two men up front. Introducing the Spurs starting 11. Jonathan Tarr plays alongside Davinson Sanchez in central defence. And the focal point in attack today, Harry Kane. The bench kind of looks threadbare, to be honest. Do you remember how much you bought Victor for? I might go through in my career mode. Um, off the top of my head, I think it was 50 million in Pogba, or 30 million in Pogba. I'll check at the end of the game, and you can have a look then. But I, was, I, I put Pogba in a deal um, along the other way, I believe. But I will check. Fernandez, Aussie man. Oh, you defending. fucking tam, Tim Pot merchant. Right, we can't be messing up today. If Meccano puts a tackle in, solid on Clark. Clark's going to be the one to expose here today because he'll have much Premier League experience as the rest of his team. Bruno. Oh, I'll try to throw it for to Aussie man and he doesn't win the second header against Tar. Jack Clark. You told me Harry Maguire would be one of the players of the series. I would have told you a fucking liar. Oh, go away, Liverpool. Well, there seems to be no stopping them at the moment. Oh, ref, you didn't, ref, you didn't see anything, mate. There's no, There's no need for it. There's no need for it. He tripped over me. I didn't do anything. It wasn't anything cynical. I think it's a great bit of refereeing. Everybody now knows the next foul will be punished. I mean, it was definitely a foul, but I just, I'm trying to play it off as if it wasn't. Uh, good deliver this in, surely, ain't shooting this. Yeah, I didn't think so somehow. Maguire gets it away. Initially. And ball. As I say, thank God. We'll let off there because it wouldn't let me switch the player what to use. I'll happily take the handball. Up Meccano, off to McTominay. This is going to be a... Uh, if we get one goal, we're just going to have to defend, I think. I don't think it's going to be a... A goal filled game. Finley Alexander. Okay, right. If I've ever seen a dive in my life, that is it. Finley Alexander channeling his inner Raheem Sterling there. No shot Harry Kane beats Hakimi for pace or strength. Well, maybe for strength, but not for pace. Which is good, really, because the centre backs are out of position, unfortunately. Bruno. Out Sancho. to Jaden Sancho. Bruno. Ozzy Men. Good touch. 
Ronaldo. Fouled a little bit, but gets away with it. Bruno into Ronaldo. Come on, I couldn't get a touch properly. Spurs are going to get it away here. There's no way that gets to Son. No, I was going to say, I was going to say, Hakimi does well. Alexander. Goes through Aussie men. Oh, fucking. I want to watch this back because it might have just been, it might have just been me being dumb. But I, I swear I aimed that for Sancho. Yeah. Yeah, I thought so somehow. I really thought so somehow. Explain. Explain this one, please. I've aimed directly at Sancho. Could someone understand what I'm going through here? Why has that gone back? Why has that gone back? That goes to Sancho, who won the lap, or at least got a very good chance of scoring there. Um, I'm low-key pissed. Can I go Maguire? Can I go Maguire? It took four presses of the LB to go Maguire there. That's lovely. Responsive game, my ass. Hakimi plays it to Harry Maguire. Into McTominay. Bit risky, but it worked. Alexander gets caught by Reguillon, but keeps the run going. Is it going to end up being productive for them? Ronaldo is at the far Alexander floats in. It's not going to fall. Jonathan Tarr gets it away. Tried to launch it to Sancho with a header, but it didn't work out. It's a fucking ball breaker of a game, especially if we lose. Especially if we lose. We've got no Luke Shaw, so Bruno's going to have to cover this role here at left back. Uh, Shaw has returned to his position. And he's made the tackle. Fair play, Luke Shaw. Took a little bit longer to get back. I would have liked, but he got back in the end. Ronaldo. Aussie men. Surely has a beating of Davinson Sanchez here. Close. Closing the angle down. Across to Sancho. Oh, I thought for a second we might have messed that up, but I was considering just booting it with Aussie men at the goal, but oh, Nana might have saved it. We turned inside nicely, and Victor, Aussie men, plays it off to Jaden Sancho, and we lead at Old Trafford. Sancho left in space, had enough space and time just to nick that in to the bottom left corner. Ronaldo was also there on hand, but Jaden Sancho... Gets the finish, gets the lead here at Old Trafford. Don't know how many goals he scored this season. I missed the graphic. Ninth goal of the season for Jim Sancho. He's had a hell of a lot better season than last season. I'll tell you that much. He's really settled in. I can't believe last season there was a point where I was considering a Langer over Sancho. A Langer's been okay this season, but he's not been anywhere near as he was last season either the Sancho effect Maguire wins ahead of just about Bruno's going to get pressed here I just need to try and play it away best I can it's come to Aussie men who's controlled it well and now Alexander's not going to get position. there it's a good tackle from Jonathan Ta who has been rock solid for Spurs I'll give credit where credit's due he's been the best out of the defensive three I don't know why Hakimi's committing as much as he is teams. but he is I guess Oh, it could have worked out. It was an interesting idea. Can't lie. I thought it might work for a second once it got past the defence, but wasn't kept under control and rolled straight into David De Gea. Ronaldo, Aussie man asking for it. Decent touch. <coughs> oh, excuse me. I try and mute when I do that, but I'm in the middle of an attack. McTominay. Ronaldo. Try to get to Aussie men. Oh, it's not going to work out. The idea was good, uh, but the uh, hasn't worked out in the end. Open Meccano, we definitely need a second here if we're going to keep distance here because Spurs look like they're ready to score at any old point here in this one. Shaw does well again. Positioning for Luke Shaw has not been wonderful this game, but uh, once he's needing to put a tackle in, he's putting a tackle in, so I'll give him credit where credit's due. Aussie men has not aimed for the correct player there. That was for uh, Alexander. Keep pressing here, lads. Keep pressing here. Can't let him. Can't let him have a moment. But we're letting him have a lot of moments here, which is kind of concerning. Good tackle. And a good looking pass. And Spurs moving the ball forward. What can they do from here? If Makano gets in the way, I don't know what Reguilón was thinking, but now Finley Alexander could counter here. I should have passed it off. I really should have passed it off. Thought get through. Now Clark, he's actually not been too bad today, but 
Again, he's not Premier League quality unless his rating's gone up, I guess. But I don't see who else they put there. They haven't signed, but are we really? Are we really? Are we actually? Okay, cool. I guess we are. I guess we are. We're just having audio issues before the first half's even done. That's got to be a it's got to be a time record, to be fair. Well, we're gonna have a half-time podcast here, I guess, until it fixes itself. McTominay puts a tackle in. We get to the break. Again, the usual advice: if you're watching with earphones, probably don't. Well, very FIFA likes to do this thing where the audio Sancho. goes to shit. It is definitely the video game. I've well, looked up. I've looked up really again recently. Off. It's definitely something to do with the video game. Hopefully, it fixes sure itself. Sancho half. gives us the lead just before the break. But uh, if all the issues persist, we may have a mid-game podcast again. Look at the half-time results around the grounds. Fulham leading Brentford. Chelsea and Everton to play later. Doesn't, neither of them really affect us at the moment. We are leading. Do we deserve it? Oh my. It's been a really quiet game. The one shot we've had has been a goal. Fair enough. And it is that man, Jaden Sancho, who converted that shot. to a very big battle in the midfield and the defence. A very tight match. There's not been anything in it. But we need to find a second in the second half to secure the dub here. All right, let's get let's get going with it. Hopefully, the audio issues subside. If there is still any audio the issues at all, it might be crackling underway. up to half time. Right for Spurs in the first um, but also, we need, we absolutely need to get a goal early in the second half if we want to hold this lead. Alexander somehow was kept on the pitch. I thought Alexander dribbled off the pitch twice in that uh, bit of play there, but he kept on the whole time. Ozzy meant offering an option backwards. Don't know why. McTominay to Bruno. Uh, I saw the idea, it was a good idea, just the execution was fucking shite. For lack of a better word. It was poor, poor execution there. I don't know if it's committed to centre-backs. Oh no. I've got a horrible feeling they'll also score their first shot. Luke Shaw does well. Okay, we're just going to have more audio issues for no reason. Fernandez, Alexander, thread it through to Aussie men. Mate. Good well by Damon Sanchez. Let's cough Sancho, because Sancho's got in the way. How am I meant to deal with this? What am I meant to do about this fucking audio bullshit, man? How is it August and this game doesn't work with Xbox streaming? Please explain to me how it's August and it doesn't work properly. Just going for the menus here to see if it makes a difference. TV. <sighs> yeah, whatever. I'm, I'm just getting for the game. It's too warm and I'm too annoyed as it is today. I need to get going soon so I don't have any real time to stop for too long. And it's United's turn now. Cristiano Ronaldo. Ronaldo. to Aussie men. We haven't seen a lot of goals from him recently. We've seen contribute. Okay. I, I mean, what? What just. I mean, we're turtle up. And yes, Sue and all that. But how? How? How has that passing Aussie men worked in any way? Well, here it is again. And it's all about the pace in transition. They're so quick to get out from the back. What is Aussie Met? That's here. not the pass I want to do with Aussie so Met, well, I'm not going to lie. That's not what we're looking for. Yet. I just want to, I, I don't do this bit, like, I do question my goals sometimes. It's very rare, but like, this is not what I want to do. <laughs> How? <laughs> and that ball was meant to go back to Aussie Men instead of going to Ronaldo, but you know, that's the, that's the second part of this puzzle. How does this get... Who's that defender there? Because he has a lot of questions to answer for. Number 20. Is it Tad? Don't tell me it's Tad. He's had a good game. It is as well. He's had a good game otherwise as well. I don't really know. But we are 2-0 up. And that's, that's all that matters. That's the general choice. scheme of things here. Cristiano Ronaldo gives us a second here at Old Trafford. I believe it's only his eighth of the season. But he has been injured for the majority of it. So we'll take that, honestly. 
eighth in the league, I should mention. Oh, it's got more in all competitions. Ronaldo. Aussie man. Oh, it was an idea. It didn't pay off. But if that kind of ball works, any kind of ball is going to work to get through. I don't know. I have absolutely no idea where my right back's migrated to. If Mercado gets enough on it and it goes to Shaw, who gives it away to Bruno here. Sancho got room on the left here. Frimpong's been left in the dust. What I've realised is I usually use the wings closer to the camera. I don't know why. Well, I do know why. It's because it's closer to the camera, but it's just weird, really. Are Spurs still in the Champions League in this? Fair play to if they are. Maguire puts in a good tackle, and it's going to be a corner to Spurs. I expect a goal like that for the CPU. Yeah, no, so would I. I don't know why I've got that. We're going to make a couple of changes here. And by a couple, I just mean one, because Alexander is fucked. Rashford's going to come on for the right wing. First time in a while, but he is going to get some right wing time. Well, both teams have had substitutes swarming up. And now I can't lie, I thought I saw the Langer on the bench, but I remembered I put Nunez on instead. Jack Clark going to make way as well for Brian Hill. Surprised he ain't starting, to be fair. First corner of the game goes Spurs' his way. Sancho gets it away enough to Marcus Rashford, who's got the pace to counter. And he's just come on as well. Looking confident with the ball at his feet. Gives it a go. A terrific piece of goal. Imagine that was your first contribution to the game. You run the whole pitch and you get a third. Oh, Nana prevents Spurs from going further behind. Fair fox to Rashford. For going the whole way. I was considering slotting it through to Aussie men, but then the space opened up. I thought I might as well take it on. Now we've got our first corner of the game. Jaden Sancho aims it towards McTominay. It was actually for Maguire, but Maguire's moved. Rashford. Bruno. Try to find an option here. Doesn't get one. Rashford. McTominay. Oh, just try to pop it for Ronaldo. Ain't occurred on that occasion. Now, counter attacking possibilities here. Oh, what? Son. Oh, what? Well, I messed up big time. Available. Yeah, I messed up. Well, that the that's, that's a problem. I did mess up there. I shouldn't have slid to Maguire. Uh, but in the end, it's just poor marking from the defence. And of course, can we, can we notice down by the first shot for Spurs and they immediately well, score? Who would have known FIFA? Do you want to make any right less like, obvious that you're trying to script me out of this? Quite so easily. I thought that was stoppable. Two one. Ben Tanker gets one back, which means I'm glad we got a bloody second with Ronaldo. Otherwise, we'd have been the stick. Could smell the Son equaliser coming. Yeah, no, so can I. It's exactly the same story because I think we went a couple of goals up last time around. And it ended up with Spurs, uh, well, equalising and then getting the dub. But if Aussie men can score here, that changes everything. Uh, he doesn't. He's been, he's been fouled, but the ref doesn't want to give it. But Spurs. And my defensive positioning here is just absolutely awful. Hakimi has to get that first and keep it on the pitch. Not like that. I've not aimed there. I've aimed for Rashford. Some risky passes here being played by the boys. I ain't doing. I mean, the Osman one, I, I did do that. I, well, the Osman one leading to the goal was the one I did, but not with that little amount of power. But realistically, some suspicious passes here that I didn't ask for. Hakimi gets the tackling, but it's a throw at Spurs. And now Reggion down the left. Fucking hell. Maguire's done brilliantly. Right, do we really need that? Right, when I'm ready to defend, no? Do we Do we need that? Do we need the audio issues when I'm trying to fucking focus? I don't think so, but... They're back. Back in, back in full force. We're still going in one of the pause menu. It's just, it's, it's trying to take over. So again, if you were watching with the earphones, take them off, for love of God, for your ears' sake. We're going to see this game out, because I do need to go. 
very, very soon. So wraps up whatever happens. Aussie man has been tackled. I don't have any left mid option. Sancho hasn't made the run. There we go. Perfect. The strike has to make the left wing run. Raldo to Bruno. Can't get a shot off. I've got to pull my earphone out. I can't concentrate. It's so stupid, man. Oh, what? Oh my god, I thought that trickled in. Fucking hell. Whoever's running down the left there is giving me a heart attack, man. And then Kane couldn't get the finish. I think it's actually going to be a goal kick because Kane took the shot on. Mate, that gave me a heart attack and a half. Not as bad as these audio problems, which I apologise profusely for, but there's, again, there's nothing I can do. De Gea to Ivan Meccano. Could Correa making his way. I was just something fresh at that left back for the first, final few minutes, I think, and that's why I brought Kuka Correa on. Sancho, can we get a third just to wrap it up? No, because the pass hasn't gone in the right direction. And they're gonna get the, they're gonna get the equalizer. I can smell it. I can fucking die. Oh, it's, it's definitely coming. Maguire done really well. I can't be arsed with FIFA if it's gonna continue like this. Fuck off! Just fuck off. If you want to script it anymore, please just tell me. I'll I'll let you have the goal. I can't be arsed going through this. <laughs> This is great audio, by the way. Do you like appreciate the audio quality I'm bringing to the table? Seriously, I pl played that off of Aussie Men, it's just not done it. Thank you, De Gea. I thought for a second there. This this FIFA 22 overall has just been absolutely shocking. Audio issues beyond my control. Awful gameplay. No sense. Fuck off, you're playing it short, you little bastards. Get the fuck out of here. God, man. It's not the game just wants to give it to him, it's going to keep giving it to him until they get it. This is great audio, by the way. For anyone who have deafened throughout this whole career mode series and throughout the whole of 22, for anyone who's lost hearing watching my videos, I profusely apologise. There's physically nothing I can do. I've gone through every fix I can. It ain't occurring. Yes, Kukure is the one to head of that, yeah. Thank God, ref. We're six minutes into three minutes of added time. So we take the dub. In very scary circumstances. Audio has gone down the toilet. I'm really hoping after the fucking game's done it goes into the pre-match conference it fixes itself but I ain't, I ain't holding that hope this game's, this game's just a dumpster fire I'm looking so forward to FIFA 23 De Gea came up big there at the end oh De Gea was quality just those last couple of saves <sighs> Sancho Ronaldo getting us enough goals to make sure that Ben Tankers doesn't mean anything for Spurs I'll put a timestamp in the description about the audio fucking hell Ridiculous. I shouldn't have to warn people about things beyond my control, but there you go. Spurs actually got more shots than us in the end. <laughs> 52 to 48 in terms of possession to Spurs, 5 shots to 3, and 1.6 expected goals to 1.2. But in the end, we get 3 points, which is the most telling stat of all. Take a look at the ratings. Man of the match goes to Jaden Sancho, 7.8 and a goal. Cristiano Ronaldo as well with a goal and a 7.4. He technically scored the winner. They tried very hard to give him an equaliser, I know. The game really wanted us to drop points there. De Gea with a 7.2. Maybe the most important player on the pitch after preventing us losing the three points there at the end. Finley Alexander with an assist and a 7.1. And then Aussie men with the other assist and a 7. Luke Shaw did better than I thought he would, to be honest. But, um... Best defence of the league, in my opinion, there. We needed what we could. I don't know what I'm on about, to be honest. I can't concentrate because of static. The static that I am unable to control. We are just going to go to the post-match interview. I didn't check the Spurs ratings. I, I can't be bothered, honestly.
Kane probably got something like a 7. Son got something like a 7. Ben Tanker got probably a 7.5 because he scored. Can we ask you a question? I don't remember who assisted. He probably got like a 7.3. Maybe people expect to see Nunez back in the team. I mean, he is back in the team. He just wasn't having a game today. He's gonna get the other. He's gonna get the other leg of the Osasuna game. So. Run beaten so far since the start of the Premier League season. That's a load of shit because we've lost four games, I believe, this season. But uh, I'm not obsessed with the run really. It's asked the same question every time. It says run beaten and we're not. Like. I'll get it. Really turn things around. Uh, we were better prepared for today. Not audio-wise. Audio-wise, we were absolutely awfully prepared. But uh, in terms of actual gameplay, we were better prepared. And we no took it to them. Thank you. And in the end, we grinded out a result, got the three points required, which puts us back within four of the league leaders. Ronaldo says thanks for pushing me back into Accione. Thanks for pushing me back into action at last. I definitely felt ready. It was the right decision, wasn't it? Uh, went to plan for sure. I mean, you got the winner. He's had two and two since his return, so you can't fault him. We also have to remember during the selection that in just three days' time, we do have the Carabao Cup final. Um, Southampton. Will it be our foes at Wembley? Saw someone on Reddit who was having the same problem with audio. It says when you change your audio output when you already have, when you've already started the game. I don't know if that means anything for what issues you're having. Blah, blah, blah. No, because my audio output's always the same. I don't change the audio output. It's always the same from the start to the end. There's no change. So I don't know. I don't really know what it is. I've seen that one as well. I've seen him put that. How it's an audio output issue, but it isn't. I've also seen people say restart the game, but I'm not restarting the game 80 minutes into a 2 0 lead against Spurs. I shouldn't have to. I shouldn't have to fix it. It should be on their end that it should work anyway, really. But uh, FIFA and things working just don't make sense. Burnley are in the Europa League. Back up. Back up a minute. Burnley are in the Europa League. Could be the game is shit. The game is shit. The game is awful. I'm look. I'm so looking forward to FIFA 23. I'm hoping it fixes itself. I'm guessing Burnley got knocked out of their group stages, right? Yeah. Woot Weghorst scoring seven, and Burnley still getting knocked out. That's mental. But why are Burnley even in here? How did Burnley get in here? <laughs> Who gave them the fucking passport? They must have won a cup competition, son. Regardless, they're out now and we won't face them. We just need to uh, clear us a sooner a second time, which will be no problem at all. We've already got a 3-0 aggregate. Um, take a look at the other preliminary rounds. I'm still going to continue the uh, episode as normal. Audio's not going to stop me. I've had enough of it. I'll just talk I'll just talk louder than the uh, static. So Zagreb up over Slavia. Benfica and Augsburg join. Leon uh, leading Feyenoord. Dortmund uh, leading PSV. We're leading Osasuna. So I think all the teams here that you expect to be in the lead are, in fact, in the lead. There is no surprises around here. He's in Europa League. What Cavani is in the cup? Yeah, I know. Weghorst is the Europa League's Cavani. <laughs> that reminds me, actually, as well. For the Southampton game, we've got to give Cavani... I don't think I'll start Cavani against Southampton, but I think we've got to give him some kind of appearance at some point in the game. Some kind of... Uh, Cameo, but ladies and gentlemen, this audio is doing my head in. I'm sure it's doing your head in. I don't understand why it does it. I've checked every single fucking avenue I can. I think it's just the game being absolutely wank, to be honest. You know what, actually, we'll do we'll do a little fact finding trip before we end the episode. We'll do a little sightseeing trip. Give me a second. We'll just save over. In fact, I should have just saved and exited, to be honest, because what I'm gonna do. I'll just save over it again. Bring him on the 70th minute or something like that. Yeah, bring him on second half, just for a little bit of an appearance. He deserves it. <laughs> so let's just... Uh, I'll have a little gander here. I'm not a professional, but... We'll go to settings. We'll go to... Uh, audio here. Uh, so... This is all, all fine. General audio is fine. There's nothing that says... Crackle like a motherfucker to piss people off. There's no, nothing that says that. 
There's nothing that says, oh, have the audio just be shit. Because it isn't. There isn't an option there. That's all fine. Has it stopped now? Has it actually stopped now, right at the end of the episode? Game's a joke, mate. We're turning, in, we're turning it all off. No, I'm joking. Uh, but in all seriousness, that is going to end another episode of the Magic United Career Mode. I love how the audio fixes itself as we're ending it, but at least it has fixed itself. But ladies and gentlemen, next time we'll take on Osasuna in the second leg of the preliminary round of the Europa League. And then following that, we will have the Carabao Cup final against Southampton. So the Saturday double upload is going to be popping off. But I hope you guys have enjoyed uh, apologies for hurting your ears in that last uh, passage of play. In fact, now that it's stopped, I'm going to go back on and check the league table. I watched to check the league table, to be honest, and I completely forgot because I could... I got static in my earphone that is probably deafening me. I'm probably losing hearing as we speak. It's not that bad, really, but... It's just when it does it, like, it doesn't matter, like, every so often, but when it just, like, constant, I can't understand why it's annoying. But Premier League. We're now back in within four points of Liverpool. I don't know how much that means for anything, really, but we are we are um, still winning. We've got the big dub against Spurs that we required. Uh, City third, Chelsea fourth, West Ham fifth, Arsenal sixth, Spurs seventh. Reading down the table, if any of your teams are in the lower half here, I apologise anyone supports any. Uh, Fulham... Brentford and Nottingham Forest still in the relegation zone. Forest yet to pick up a win. Take a look at the next games then for ourselves at Liverpool. I'm, st I'm stalking Liverpool like nobody's business. We missed off some more games in February. Or Liverpool will maybe anyway. They do. They have Brighton. Oh, lovely. Brighton is 16. So there's going to be no result there for us. Um, and then they've got Villa. I'm really hoping Villa can pull something out against P Liverpool, to be honest. That would be brilliant. I'm hoping Brighton could steal something as well. Six points, yes. City keep on winning as well. City aren't slowing down. I wouldn't say they're in the title race, but they're definitely about it, I guess. They're involved. I wouldn't say they're going to get it, but they are definitely involved in this entire race itself. It's going to be a tough one. Who have City got next? Might as well scout City out as well. City have got uh, Forest. Okay, well, there you go. An easy win for City. Why are all the other teams around us playing the easy games then? And we're just getting fucking difficult ones. But uh, anyway, when do we next play City? City is the 29th of March. Liverpool's 15th of April. Those are two pinpointed games. Of course, Arsenal as well down the line. Chelsea still to play. I think that's. I think Spurs, we played a second time now. So we've only got four more of the big six to play. Of course, we are one of them. Chelsea the 12th. City 29th. Uh, Liverpool 15th. Arsenal 29th. So we've got those... Uh, dates written down. We are prepared for them. I am going to end the episode off now. I know the audio has subsided, but I'm going to end the episode off now because I do need to get going. But I hope you guys have enjoyed this episode of the Manchester Night Career Mode. Sorry for bursting your drums and all that. But we do get the three points. We are back within four of Liverpool. City still keep on winning as well. It's going to be an interesting running to the end of the season. But I'll see you next time when we uh, demolish Osasuna and get into the Europa League round of 16.